Hello and welcome to this video of ARIMA time series model and in the last video we discussed about what is ARIMA and how ARIMA is used for forecasting. In this video we are going to do hands on on ARIMA. The data set which we are going to use is available on this link. The link is going to be available in the comment section, so, section of this video. This is a bike sharing data set and basically it tells you about the days and the count of bike sharing across the rental bikes between 2011 and 12. So it shows hourly and daily count. For our this hands-on we are going to use daily count of rental bikes between 2011 and 12 in capital bike share system with weather and seasonal information. So we're going to use this data and this is the citation request requested by the uploader Mr. Fanny T. Hadi and Gamma Jao. Uh, so let's get started. So what you have to do is you have to download this data, this set. And when you download that, you would get a file which would be day.csv and hours.csv. For this hands-on, we are going to use day.csv. Spend some time understanding and seeing the data, what it is. I'm just going to focus to start with on this date and the count. So it shows the date and the count of the bikes. So C and T is count and DTE day is our date, which is you know, your time, time period. So with this, I'm going to go and get this data into R and do our magic on ARIMA. So the packages which we're going to use if you have not done so yet, use ggplot2, t-series and forecasting, forecast packages. Please install these packages if you haven't done it already. So I'm going to load library ggplot, forecast and t-series. So all these three libraries are loaded. then let's load the data. Let's take a look at the data and you would see there are a lot, the whole data set is loaded with in this data frame. Okay, next step. So let's just see what this data looks like and For that, let's convert this date as dot date. It may, it's a CSV form, so it may not have read it as date. Let's read it as date. And now this is gonna give you a time series date. Perfect, now let's do a plot. So in order to plot, we're gonna use ggplot2, this library. And you can see that there are, this is the plot, and there are outliers. So if you look at this, the trend is increasing here. This is the trend. But out of this trend, these are outliers. So if you look at this value, this value, there are these are outliers. So we have to smoothen this up so there should not be so many variations so if you look at variations which I talked about in the last video the value from here which is a tab dip down to this lowest bottom which is which may be because on this day uh, there was huge rainfall or uh, there was, the weather wasn't good or uh, you know for some reason uh, people did not use bike those days there are there could be a lot of things so in order to kind of do a good prediction we would now try to smoothen it out so let's see how to to do that so let's remove the outliers
Now let's write this smooth rentals, which is your clients data and see what it has changed. So I have written this data, which is the smooth rentals without any outliers. And you can see that I have written on day one dot CSV and I got this data here, smooth rentals. So this is the smooth data and this is the data which is originally in the file. So I have cr created a difference. Let's filter and you can see that there are a few changes. So what it does is, should have done the other way around. So the value originally was 1027 and because of the moving average, it kind of smoothed it and added four and replaced it with 4919 so that the curve is smooth. I'm going to plot the curve. I'm going to show it to you. And you look at 22. This day, I think it was a, it was a holiday or a, or a temperatures very low or humidity very high. There, there has to be something which, uh, which triggered a low bike rentals. So because of the moving average, it, it, it turned this number 22 to 4828 in order to have any outliers removed from the data. So let's plot the data and see how, so this was the original data and I'm gonna print screen for you. And then I'm gonna plot the new data. Let me just Take this screenshot here we see that this outlier will be removed don't worry on this one this is the background of screenshot now you can see that the outliers here were removed so please compare it with this graph. These outliers here, here, here are removed. Not removed, but kind of brought as per the averages. So this is the smoothing which you would need to do to make sure your ARIMA model works as you would expect. Now you have cleansed data in smooth rentals and let's use this to create a moving average for daily seven day rental and you cannot write here so I'm going to write V so daily seven day moving average rental and 30 day moving average rental this is to make sure that we are able to decompose the seasonality and trend STL as we discussed. So what I did is we created this moving average with the smooth rentals for seven days order equal to seven and then 30 for monthly average. So this is monthly data and this is a weekly data. Next let plot the rental once again. So this is the rental, all the rentals, the count of rentals, and this is the smooth count. This is equivalent to what we just plotted. And with that, I'm going to add the weekly rental plot and the monthly rental plot, just to give you a visual representation on how it looks like. So I added two lines for daily data it's for 7 day moving average and 30 day moving average. So the red line is 30 day moving average, the green line is 7 day moving average and the blue line is rentals. So you can see that the 7 day moving average is 
lesser in fluctuations as compared to the actual rentals and the 30 day moving average is even less in the fluctuations. So you can see as you find the moving averages the fluctuations kind of data down and it's very little and this is the trend which we wanted to find out. So in a time series let's do a quick recap here. In this time series we have used these libraries then we have the data loaded and we just found out the outliers. We removed the outliers and we have smoothed rentals and we populated this in file. It's not important but just to for you to understand what is the change in the data this smoothing had, what is the impact, then plotted the impact and then calculated a 30 day average and 7 day moving average to understand the trend for the data. So all we have done is just an initial analysis. Next is we are going to do the seasonal component STL seasonal trend analysis and before that let's understand STL here. So it is seasonal decomposition of time series and this is required to make sure that the ARIMA model is having or the data flow pumped into ARIMA model is suitable. So in the next session or in the next video we are going to talk about STL and how to decompose your data. Thank you for watching.